In this video, we will be talking about the Asia Impairment Scale, otherwise known as the International Standards for Neurological Classification of Spinal Cord Injury. We will be focusing on what exactly the scale is, the components it's made up of, how each component is tested, and how spinal cord injury is classified. Before we discuss the Asia Impairment Scale, we need to understand what a spinal cord injury is. The spinal cord is found in the vertebral column and consists of 31 segments that connect the brain to the rest of the body, allowing us to feel and move in the world around us. A spinal cord injury is any insult to the spinal cord that disrupts its normal sensory, motor and autonomic function. It's important to have a high index of suspicion as spinal cord injury can cause devastating disability. Suspect spinal cord injury in any patient with loss of consciousness, head injury and facial fracture, falls from heights, near drowning experiences, pain, deformity or stabs near the spinal cord, neurological deficit, unexplained shock, unexplained respiratory difficulty, and lastly, unexplained urinary retention and priapism. The Asia Impairment Scale is a scoring system used to define the level of sensory and motor impairment after a spinal cord injury according to accepted international standards. It is used to assess the extent of injury and can be used over time to monitor rehabilitation. Ideally, it should be performed on a patient within 72 hours of injury. The scale was developed by the American Spinal Injury Association and provides a common language for healthcare professionals, patients and families to discuss spinal cord injuries. When evaluating a patient using the Asia Impairment Scale, both right and left sides of the body are tested. There are three main components, motor exam, sensory exam, as well as the anorectal examination. Unlike neurological examinations in other settings, the examination to determine the Asia Impairment Scale is performed while the patient is supine. The motor component of the examination determines the muscle power in 10 key myotomes. In the upper limb, C5 to T1 segments are tested. In the lower limb, L2 to S1 segments are tested. For each segment, the muscle power is graded from 0 to 5 according to the MRC grading. Grade 0 means total paralysis. Grade 1 means that there is a muscle twitch. Grade 2 means that there is full active range of movement with gravity eliminated. Grade 3 means that there is full active range of movement against gravity. Grade 4 means the patient is able to generate some resistance. And grade 5 is normal strength. If the segment cannot be tested, it is given an NT grading meaning it is not testable. Now we will demonstrate the upper and lower limb motor examination, which should include both sides of the body. First is C5 elbow flexors. So C6 wrist extensors. C7 elbow extensors. C8 finger flexors and T1 finger abductors. Now we will move on to the lower limb. First L2 hip flexors, next L3 knee extensors, L4 ankle dorsiflexors, L5 long toe extensors and S1 ankle plantar flexors. The sensory component of the examination is performed in 28 dermatomes from C2 to S5. For each dermatome, light touch and pinprick sensation are tested and scored. The scoring system uses a three point scale. Zero is absent sensation, one is impaired sensation and two is normal sensation. Now we will demonstrate the sensory examination for the upper limb. We will start with light touch with cotton in dermatomes C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. It is important to ask the patient whether they feel sensation and if it feels normal. Now we will demonstrate pinprick examination of the upper limb with a safety pin in the dermatome C2 to T1 
as we did for light touch. These two examinations should be continued throughout all 28 dermatomes and should be repeated on the left side of the body. However, this will not be demonstrated in this video. The anorectal examination is vital in determining the Asia impairment scale and the level of the lesion. When performing the rectal examination, it is important to determine whether the bulbocavernosis reflex is intact. If the bulbocavernosis is negative, this indicates that the patient is still in spinal shock and the level of injury cannot be assessed. Once the bulbocavernosis is positive, the patient is out of spinal shock and so the Asia assessment can be performed. On digital rectal examination, voluntary anal contraction and deep anal sensation are tested for. Once the examination has been conducted, the scores are added up to a total and the spinal cord injury is classified in five steps. The sensory level, the motor level, the neurological level of injury, whether it is complete or incomplete, and the Asia impairment scale grade. The lesion is complete. The zone of partial preservation is also defined. The sensory level of the lesion is defined for the right and left sides as the lowest segment with normal sensory function in both light touch and pinprick. The motor level of the lesion is defined for the left and right sides as the lowest level with at least 3 out of 5 power, with all segments above being 5 out of 5 power. The neurological level of the injury is the lowest level at which both sensory and motor functions are intact as previously defined. Spinal cord injuries are classified as either complete or incomplete. A complete injury means that there is no voluntary anal contraction, deep anal pressure, or sensation in S4, S5. An incomplete injury means that there is some preserved sensation and or muscle contraction in the lowest sacral segments. This is a much better prognosis than a complete injury. Now, the Asia impairment scale grade can be determined. It's classified from A to E. If the injury is complete, it is a grade A injury. If the motor injury is complete, but there is some sensory function below the neurological level of injury, the injury is grade B, sensory incomplete. Grade C and D are motor incomplete, with motor sparing below the neurological level of the injury. The injury is grade C if less than half of key muscles below the level of the injury are at least 3 out of 5, and D if half or more are graded at least 3 out of 5. The lesion is grade E if there is no neurological fallout. Some key points to remember are, the Asia impairment scale is used to define the extent of spinal cord injury. Patients must not be in spinal shock and must be fully cooperative. There are three main components of the scale, and once the examination has been performed, classify the injury according to the five steps. Thanks for watching.